Hello everyone! Welcome to the second episode of this channel's first series. If I can make two, then I can make three, and hopefully so on and so on. As the name of this series implies, it will be a run of building tutorials, but hopefully interesting ones. Each season will cover different biomes and architecture styles pertaining to them, sometimes a bit vaguely, I'll admit. Um, but this season covers the oak and the birch forests, which are simple biomes for my simple, gradual start. So the reason why I'm starting off a little simplistically, if um, you end up watching this episode and have watched my last one, it's so that I can burn through easier houses to help me get a hang on the whole production process and schedule, and make mistakes on the smaller, less important content. Um, but you better believe that these houses will get crazier and crazier and more and more thematic as things move forward. For the sake of being brief, and in the philosophy of trying to inspire the viewer rather than making you feel shoehorned into following exact instructions, the tutorial elements will be minimalistic and deal mainly with progressing snapshots of elements of the building. This house is a fairly easy to build, moderately resource intensive home for one or two players. Or more, but that's what it's designed around. The included features hope to make it stand as a long-term house capable of sustaining you into the endgame, and it's designed around having the outdoor elements feel included in the overall construction. So its main side element in the center is a basic animal enclosure underneath a bridge connecting the two living area balconies. This house has overall four interior rooms, you know, one for general appliances, one for storage, one for magical endeavors, and then a bedroom, yada yada, all of which are scaled and decorated to feel lived in and adventurous. Though naturally, you have the power to designate things however you wish, potentially even turning these into two separate private homes entirely. Overall, this episode hopes to bring you a solid middle ground demonstration, showing you my take on making relatively basic architecture and materials look pretty nice. So let's show you how it was all put together. So we're going to start with the smaller of the two buildings, since it contains, uh, in my interior layout, all of the most necessary things that will be important to keep you going as you construct the more complicated elements. So the first room will be dug into the ground a little, um, so this is to make it feel tall and spacious. So start by digging a 5x4 pattern one block deep into the earth. On the corners above the ground, build wooden pillars three high, and then connect them across um, with beams like this. So designate and mark your doorways by placing a forward-facing wood log on the top of the door frame. Um, so one door will be placed in the center of the front, and another will be placed one block away from the corner of the right side. To fill in the walls, start by completely filling in the back end with cobblestone, and then do the same on the front end by filling in the sides lining the designated door space. And then on the left side, fill it in with cobblestone, but though just leave open a two wide space in the center adjacent to the top. And then on the right side that has the door, just leave open the space adjacent to the decorative log. Um, make sure to do the flooring before putting in the actual doors. I used polished andesite because I don't think it gets enough love. Um, so then put your doors in and then put glass panes in both of these open spaces. So you'll of course want to make sure that there's a small stairway on each side to allow you to enter and exit without getting stuck on the top of the door frame, uh, but you've probably figured that out already trying to put this together. Um, to start making your way up to the second floor, put ladders in one of the corners close to the entryway, and then use slabs to make your ceiling. And of course, make sure that they're placed on the upper half of the top block so that they'll function as a normal floor up on the other side, so you won't have any floating blocks. In the middle of the back wall, um, make a small support beam with another log and then connect a stair to the front so that it kind of blends in with the rest of the ceiling. So to light up this space, it's fun to put a lantern hanging from the beam. And now that you have a room to start putting things in, I'd of course recommend to fill this with all of your furnaces, some basic storage implements, and your crafting necessities. I'll show you how I laid out everything in two instances, so that you can decide how you want the room to look later on, place down all the practical stuff in the right spots, and then decorate around them in the future without having to move, move too much around, hopefully. So I'll just give you a few different ideas. Now that we're ready to work on the second floor, pull up all of the log corners three higher, and then connect them in the middle once again. 
So on the front end, do another forward facing log frame, but on the right side, do two this time instead of one because there's going to be a double door leading to the balcony. And also these decorative frames are going to be built into the cross beams. They're not gonna be underneath it. So fill in the space with wooden planks this time, leaving two open on the left side like you did downstairs. And you're gonna put windows there, of course. Um, and then once you put your doors in, the wall should already be completed. So to give you a surface to work off of while you start the roof, our next step will be the balcony. So rather than slabs, you're gonna actually start working with stairs. So beginning at the door, place upward facing stairs around the perimeter of the building, ending the line at the last edge of the last wall. Before we can finish, make an exterior stairway so that this can be accessed from the outside in case you fall and you don't have to go through your house and then go back up again. Um, it's about the stair directly under the door, take it over out one more by like aligning a perpendicular stair and then just extend this diagonally downwards from that edge. And then with that done, we can widen our balcony with the slab portion, um, keeping the distribution even. And that's to make sure that there are these rounded edges at the corners. So then at these edges of the corners, place more slabs outwards. And you'll also make these protrusions directly across from the door and out from the final edge. For the fences, use the protruding outward slabs as their supports. So this will be the origin points for all of your beams. So place one down on each of them like this. And then at the first two closest to the doorway, you're going to bring one out from the balcony in each respective direction like this. So one out to the right, one out to the left. And then just follow the pattern of the slabs with the railings so that they stay aligned. And then when you reach the space directly across from the double door, um, create a break, so a, a too wide break. Um, you'll want to leave this open as it will connect to the bridge later on. And then after you've lined the perimeter, you're going to bring the edges of the fences down to the ground. So on, on each corner between the two protrusions, the outer two will be extended to the ground level. Um, and then you can take the fence flanking the stairway down too, as well as the one at the final corner. Connect the post next to the stairs to the wall with gates so nothing explosive can loiter on your balcony. And um, then that'll actually be finished. So we'll just finish up this roof and then we can move on and wrap this up. Already almost halfway there. So to make the frame for the roof, start with an upside down T with glass panes at the center of both the front and the back. Fill in its corners with basic planks and then connect the tops with a long log beam. So this beam will be longer by one block on each side. And then we'll just continue with a very traditional roofing pattern, just a perfect diagonal for the sake of giving us both some tranquility to contrast the absolute chaos which is to come in future builds. Um, so just start at the top <clears throat> and work your way down, making sure to counter each diagonal movement with another in the opposite direction. You'll do this on the inside too sloping the interior roof up to this point in the beam. At the peak of the roof, lay down a layer of slabs, and it's all finished. For the interior of this upstairs room, this is how I furnished it here. Organized and simplistic, with some added hominess by adding a small support railing next to the trapdoor exit, a painting, and some lanterns hanging from chains. Uh, you have a pretty charming storage room ready for use. Although I also did a, another design that kind of turns it into a small personal library. Obviously much less practical, but it's your prerogative um, to combine decorative elements and practical ones as much as you like. Um, so now to do our second slightly larger house. Starting at the base of the right wall, you're going to walk over 15 blocks. And then while you're standing on the 15th, mark your 16th. This will be where we start building. So on the 16th block, designate a space for a double door parallel to the center alignment of the opposite house. And then when you have this marked in the earth, count out two from each edge and then build up some pillars four high. And then these will be the boundaries for the first wall. From each of these edges, count out five and then build more pillars of the same height. Uh, then you should have it all blocked out. If you decide to build the second house over a natural elevation like how I have it in the first instance, extend these wall beams down to the ground level. And then for the sake of realism, you might want to do some diagonal supports like this 
so that the house doesn't feel too skeletal. Um, between these beams at the floor level, build horizontal equivalents to intersect them. So at the top this time, rather than making your connection with log beams, you're going to do wooden planks instead. And then to finish the walls as you did before, mark the space above the double doors with open facing logs, and then designate another door at this building's front side. So respecting these reserved areas, then just fill in the rest with cobblestone and put your doors down. This portion of the house will be windowless. Um, so to do the flooring, I think we're doing it in the wrong order this time, um, but it's just going to be andesite beneath the doors again. So across from the front single door, you're going to place a wooden pillar that goes up the length of the wall and then fasten ladders to it. So then place a block of planks down on each side next to it, and then you'll fill in the rest of the floor with polished andesite as before. So underneath the house, since this andesite looks strangely exposed, you can cover it with wooden slabs, and this gives the architecture a more engineered um, appearance. So to do the ceiling of this room, you're going to line the planks at the top with stairs and then fill in the place with slabs. To light up the room, we'll have to extend down some of the slabs by one to make a suitable space to hang a lantern from. Um, so back next to the left door on the bottom side, place a slab down directly to the closest stair, making it block depth. And then further count from the top side of the door. Um, so it's going to be two over away from the nearest stair and then place another slab, and then you're going to be followed by lanterns on each. And now you have your ceiling and your lighting. For decoration, I did as follows. So, armor stands on the exposed strange wood shape that I made you build earlier. Um, chests done decoratively as such, a bed, a side table, and then some room to place more crafting workstations if you find yourself needing them. Around these, I put some more um, surfaces for decoration to turn this into a sort of cozy herbalist's corner. You do the upper floor. On each of the wooden pillars, excluding the one supporting the ladder, extend them three high. Um, so on the back sides, excluding the front, connect them via a bottom row of planks. On the front side, only place a single plank next to each beam. On the side walls, your second layer will start with two glass panes connected to the front beams and then followed with the rest being planks. From the third layer, place two panes in the center so that the corners will align with those on the second layer and then fill in the rest with planks again. The second layer of your back wall will just be more planks and the third will be two logs facing away from the beams connected with glass panes in the middle. The doorway to this room will be a little unique. I wanted a fun way to incorporate storage into this room as in the version that turned this into an enchanting and brewing room, pretty much all of the space is occupied. So I turned the door frame into cabinetry. So you're going to stack barrels too high around the door space and then of course put your door in the middle. On either side of each barrel stack, close them off with trap doors so it looks a little less funky. If you want to have the interactive cabinet opening feel, make sure that the traps are placed in a way so that they both open away from the center of the stack. And there you go, convenient, unique storage. Of course, you know the drill for what goes above the door and then do these L patterns of panes filling in the rest of the unused space. So like last time, we gotta finish the balcony before doing the roof. Since I oriented the second building over natural elevation, in fact, it's going to have a double balcony the bottom half which I kind of designated to be a fishing deck. So again, begin with a layer of stairs adjacent to the wall, and though underneath the front door, place it facing downward so it can actually be walked up, and then extend it down to whatever level is necessary. If this whole deck ends up running into natural terrain, whether or not you replace it is up to you. With mine, the very ends of it started hitting dirt, and at that point, I could comfortably stop using stairs, so I just switched to planks to walk on instead, because they're less expensive. And then, with about the same technique as last time, do an outer layer of slabs with rounded corners, with protruding railing supports extending the intersections. Follow the pattern again with the way you do your railings, keeping an opening around the front door stairway. And also have them end at the outside blocks on the left side, um, just to leave this all open to access. 
And if there's an elevation between the two houses, you can put down stairs next to these ending railings to lead up to it. And I'll also give you a tip here. If you have any railings that are a, next to a block their height, make the railings one taller so mobs can't start walking on the fences and reach gated off areas. And one more thing, once you have it finished and if you do want it to feel like a fishing deck, feel free to decorate this with barrels to make it seem more rugged. And I think a really fun effect is you can use wool and carpet to make them look covered by a tarp. And I, yeah, I think that's really fun. So now on to the upper deck. Right above the door frame, start doing stairs. Um, make sure the one above the door curves a little towards the right. And then rim the whole way with stairs, but end at the edge of the left wall again, like we did with the first. At this edge, you can start shortening the ascent by building another staircase. Because of the double balcony, the staircase will only be one wide, so that you can still walk the whole perimeter of the bottom one. Um, so just extend it down straight to the door. Between it and the railings, put down a gate, again, so that no walking gunpowder can capitalize on a vantage point. Um, and then after you have your stairs in place, just follow the exact pattern of the balcony below. When it comes to the railings, mirror the other house, just leave a two open space on the left side. We still have a bridge to do in a little bit. Before that, real quickly, we gotta install the ceiling. To start framing it, lay log beams across the top corners of the front walls, and then between these beams, put glass panes, and then another whole layer of panes on top of those ones. In the center of them, extend the beam across the top, protruding one out from the walls on each side, and then work downwards again and place a slab layer on the top. When you reach the bases, leave an opening for your top window. Invert the stairs next to the window to create a subtle awning shape. Um, and then round the top interior corners with some stairs again and voila! I'll give you some different shots of how I furnish the interior. And now you see why the cabinet door frame is handy. Um, so now you can store your potion ingredients stylishly. To wrap up this build, let's go do the bridge. It'll be pretty simple, so it won't be much of a grand finale. Uh, in the open spaces designated above the balconies, put a flat layer of slabs. <clears throat> in the case that there ends up being an elevation between the two, which is valid and probably common, uh, just compensate by arching the bridge however is needed. Um, yeah, so I actually think that it looks better that way. So cool, we found a happy accident. So next, connect the edges with railings. And then, like the rest of the build, these fences will be extended downward. And um, we'll start this at the corners. At said corners, place one more fence out so these squares are formed. And then build these fences down to the ground. And then we can move to the middle. So count three away from one of the sides. And at the fourth block, which should be directly in the center, bring another fence out and pull it to the ground. You're going to mirror this on the other end, of course. And then at these intervals of three on the inside of the balcony, place posts down to support a small roof. And from these, just make a too high stair arch that goes to the edges of the supporting posts. Now at the bottom, connect all of the, all of the supports to make your animal enclosure. Put gates in the center of each perimeter section. And now decorate this farming space with whatever you like. Benches, planters, pumpkins, melons, hay bales, beef hooks, watering holes, go crazy. Make it as charming as the interiors. And as you've probably noticed, the balconies aren't lit. I didn't do it earlier because I frankly forgot to. Um, so just place down some torches like so and make sure that everything stays safe, warm, and cozy. And with all that done, I hope you enjoyed and that you feel inspired. If you decide to attempt this build or incorporate elements of it, I hope it serves you well. Thanks for stopping by and I hope to see you again next week when the next episode drops.